Hello, this is Doug Walker, and next to me is... Hello out there! He looks further away, than it's the wide angle. <laughs> the, I look the, like I'm eight feet from you. I'm going I'm to squash your head. Hold on. There we go. <laughs> okay, anywho. Uh, this is my brother, obviously. And uh, a lot of people have asked, how do you make a Nostalgia Critic episode? Poorly! Which, <laughs> which I, I never thought it was like that... I don't know. It's pretty straightforward in my opinion, but a lot of people keep asking. Watch, just, watch movie, make jokes. Yeah, that's pretty much it. But uh, uh, yeah, a lot of people have asked in the time and stuff like that. So um, that's basically what we're gonna do here. Uh, usually, what happens is that we pick a movie. The, the one we're doing today is a Doomsday Machine uh, for this DVD, and we are going to. The first thing we do is we just watch it, and pretty much like what he said, we just make jokes. We just do like mystery science theater. He's a little better at it than I am. Uh, and I just write down the best ones, pretty much. Um, so, yeah, that's what we're going to do, and uh, we'll let you watch a little bit. That's the closest thing to an Oscar we're going to see. This. <laughs> <laughs> SNS sound services suck and suck. Thank God they only have one guard in this entire place. Budget cuts, Doug. They want to do a Doctor Insano bit. Yeah, that's true. They're breaking out Robbie the Robot. <laughs> Did she wear a wig over her black hair? It was a black wig! <laughs> now, if we throw a long pass to our wide receiver here, we can make the touchdown. Well, what do you consider unusual circumstances? Anything we're not prepared for. Oh, boy! <laughs> what do you consider unusual circumstances? Things that are unusual. Apparently, it's five o'clock in the moon, according to our nearest clock. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you guys aren't taking him seriously, are you? Those chopstick jockeys could... <laughs> chopstick jockeys. <laughs> That's a new one. Chinese. Those moo pansies. <laughs> Would you care to join me on a tour of the ship? See what makes it tick? Would you care to start my thrusters? Fully go where no woman has gone before? We have liftoff! They're all dressed like Powerpuff Girls. <laughs> I'm the brainy one! Nothing up here will wash socks. So, um... Yeah, that gives you an idea how uh, the watching experience goes. Kind of... <sighs> got pretty fucking boring near the end there, didn't it? Uh, what was it? About 20 minutes of just looking at the same goddamn thing? That was, uh... That was Manos, the Hands of Fate. Were uh, yeah, that was... Curiously bad. Yeah, didn't watch that. See you at the writing process. All right, so you've seen us uh, watch the movie and we just sort of shout jokes at. And usually the way the script sort of looks, these are just sort of very basic notes. Like, love the soundtrack. That just reminds me of talking about the fact there's no music. Uh, closest thing to Oscar we'll ever see. I remember that was something in the credits. Uh, it looks like Bubble in Space, the credits gave up for a second, and then they, I guess they came back, all black and a white wall, not smart. Uh, so all these little things that it's not, you know, even something where I'm not entirely sure, like, you know, should I do an Insano bit? I think Insano's spelled wrong, but, uh, uh, you get sort of this general idea, just these jokes, you know, or a Dr. Smith joke. I'm not exactly sure what I'm gonna do with all these, and I just sort of figure it out as I'm writing. Now, the writing process usually takes, like... Three to four hours, I want to say. Sometimes it can take longer, but usually it's around that amount of time. Uh, but the reason, like, you know, you might be seeing some of this saying, uh, you know, oh, well, he watches the movie, that takes, like, two hours. He writes it, that takes, like, three to four hours, you know, and then he films it, that takes about two hours. Why doesn't he just do this all, like, in one day? Just make it one long day at work. Uh, there's two reasons. One is that I make other videos, uh, sometimes cons pop up, or I'm working on other projects uh, for the site. Uh, so things do pop up, and it's best to pace it out. Uh, but the other reason is that a lot of times I think it's smart with a uh, project like this, you know, to sort of, once you write down the jokes, to sort of just let them sit for a bit. Like, I'm coming back to this the next day, and if I look at a joke, like, maybe in the moment I thought it was really funny, but when I see it again, you know, eh, maybe it doesn't click. Maybe something just doesn't flow as, as much as I thought. And it also gives time to think of other ideas, because once you see the movie and then you come back to it, you can often remember what stood out the most. Like, what do you remember after a day of seeing that movie? Because sometimes you can see something right after seeing it and like, oh, yeah, we'll make a big joke out of that, but 
then when you really think about it, it wasn't uh, anything that huge. So uh, this is all stuff to keep in mind if, you know, when and if you do something like this. Now, often what I'll do is I'll write the movie or I'll write the uh, review for the movie while actually uh, watching it. And I highly recommend that if you ever do this because if you ever – write something and you don't have the footage in front of you, a lot of times it's much harder to mimic. It's much harder to remember the exact impact it had because sometimes you remember things differently. So in this case, I'm watching it on uh, YouTube because it's a public domain movie and I, I couldn't find a DVD of it. So usually I watch it on DVD, but uh, in this case, I'm watching it on YouTube. Okay, so it's the next day. Uh, this is filming day, and I'm going to give you an idea of just what my scripts look like. And as you can see, hold on. They're not incredibly professional looking. <laughs> Uh, usually what I do is I just write them all out like that. There's no paragraph in dense or anything at all. Uh, I don't even write the line hello on the nostalgia grade because I know I'm going to say it. Uh, now, you might be wondering what the red is about. Well, the red is to remind me of anything that needs to be shot that isn't just at the traditional background. Like here, I have a little thing that says conducting coffee, and that's just a note to remind me that I have to do a scene where I'm conducting uh, the coffee maker. Or what else here? We got a scene where I'm acting as... Uh, uh, let's see, the president of Astra. You know, I'll probably do that against a green screen. And here's another one where I'm going to do, like, the stand-up comedian. Also, whenever there's a picture that uh, Jim J. Roz needs to Photoshop, I'll usually put that in red as well. Well, that gives you the general idea. Let's go to the set. Hello. <laughs> As you can see, it's not very far away from my computer. <laughs> it's uh, very, very close. Uh, now, luckily, I have two cameras. Uh, because Channel Awesome was nice enough to get me two. And uh, a lot of people ask, what kind of camera do I use? And as you can see here is uh, the Sony HD, uh, AVC HD. Uh, you can get more information there, the 1.2.3 megapixels. I don't know. If you're looking for that, that's the kind of camera I use. Uh, the tripod is pretty close you know uh to me as you can also see it's not a huge uh area you know over here it gets sort of uh, uh clunky with a lot of my computer stuff uh in terms of lights that i use i only have tungstens for now though i'm, I'm sort of be given uh being given an education from ed and Lindsay about better lights to use uh uh probably fluorescent lights would be better this one's been through hell as you can see look, look at that look at that thing there that's been dented it's fallen over a few times so i gotta get a new one anyway uh, this one's also a tungsten. It's much uh, smaller, uh, uh, but it gets the job done. This, <laughs> I don't think this is a film light, but this is what was uh, uh, given to me uh, when we asked Bargo to get in our film light. He got us this. Uh, this one doesn't even work anymore, but but this one does. Uh, it gets the job done. It's probably the brightest out of all of them, so I sort of... You know, if you point it more towards the center, it gets brighter. So I sort of point it more just to light up that area, uh, sort of get a little even. Uh, you know, anyone knows about light, you know, three-point lighting. Uh, that's kind of what I have going on here. So, uh, yeah, let's get to the actual filming. So, as you can see, I'm just about ready to film, but... Whoa! Looks like I'm in nuclear winter! It's totally bright here! That's because the exposure is set too high. So now what I'm going to do on the camera is I'm going to bring it down a bit... Uh, because you can actually play with the exposure on this camera. I think you can play with them actually on uh, most cameras. Now, before I do that, you'll see that you can actually bring it down. But, oh, that's way too dark! So you can bring it up. And you try to just sort of find that nice medium, usually about here. And even then, I sort of go back and forth. I, th I think I'm going to do this one. Uh, usually, because it's HD, I try to go an, a bit darker. So actually, it's a little harder to say with this. I'll do this one. It could be wrong, but you don't got to do that. Now, here's the thing. There's also a setting for automatic exposure. Now, when you do that, that automatically gets you to sort of the even levels. But the thing about that is, now, let's say I'm saying something. I want to get really close. You see, the lighting sort of changes. And when I come back, the lighting changes again. I put my hand up here, the lighting changes. I put it back here. The lighting changes. That can be very distracting, and a lot of times it can't be in your control. The camera just sort of takes it and decides what it wants. So most of the time, uh, you want to have it on manual, and you want to just get the setting right. But there are times, like let's say you're filming you know, just home video or a documentary or something like that, and you know you're going to be in a lot of places where the lighting's going to be flying around a lot, and you need it to adjust quickly. Uh, sometimes it's good to have it on audio, but, or auto, but most of the time you want it on manual. With that said, let's get this back. 
think that looks about right. Yeah, actually, th th this looks about right. And then what I do a lot of the times is that I'll import it into the computer. And another great thing about HD is that actually it used to be when we would shoot that if we had to go darker or lighter and we had to choose between uh, the two, we'd go brighter so you can see it. Well, now with HD, because it's getting so much detail, you can take it and you can turn up the uh, brightness and the contrast and it won't look that bad. If anything, it'll look better. So if you ever, if you have an HD camera, you're wondering which one to do, go darker, usually. Uh, it, just a hint darker, don't go super dark. But uh, if you have to choose between something a little brighter or a little darker, usually go a little darker. That's usually the best route, because you can fix it in post. Everything's fixable in post. Okay, now I have my script here. And you might be wondering, how do I know what I'm going to say to the camera and what I'm just going to read? Uh, honestly, since it's written the day before, I can usually just sort of remember. Like, I remember that... When I get up to the line, Doomsday Machine, I'm going to go to the visuals. I'm going to play the music. I'm going to do all that stuff. So I look over this line, uh, you know, get it down my head, and I usually do a couple takes. Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic. I remember it so you don't have to. And welcome to another special edition DVD review. And may I remind you, there's no refunds. Oh, yeah, you should be moaning, because today we got Doomsday Machine. All right, so that's one take. Now, I usually don't just do one take, I do several, because especially with something where you're supposed to be playing with your emotions and reactions or everything in this show, you have to do a lot of various reactions. So that one got a little big, you know, oh yeah, you better be afraid. This one's going to play down a little bit. Hello, I'm a nostalgia critic guy, remember it, so you don't have to. And welcome to another special edition DVD review. And may I remind you, there's no refunds. Oh, you better moan, because today we got Doomsday Machine. And you notice that one was a lot more chipper. Uh, the reason I do that is because sometimes just the sarcasm or the cynicism, you know, being positive about something like enjoying making you suffer can work just as well as me getting mad and me getting angry. Because if it's one tone throughout the whole thing, that it tends to be exactly that, just one tone, one note, and it can get a little boring. You want to mix it up a bit. So usually with every line, I do about... Uh, Minimum three takes. Uh, sometimes I can do as many as like ten. Because uh, you just, and you sort of feel around. You just sort of get what you think is the best feel for it or when you think you have a good variety. Sometimes, most of the time I find with me, it's either the very first take or the very last take. It's very rare that it's one of the middle ones, but sometimes it is. Sometimes I get that perfect one in the middle without even thinking about it. And now, since I know you're not going to see me during this clip, I'm going to just read this part while not looking at the camera. And I do it from this angle. I don't go to a microphone because uh, I find that the more fluent you can make something uh, when talking, usually the less distracting it is. So if my voice is sort of kept this volume and has this frequency throughout the whole thing, you're less likely to get distracted from the comedy. You're less likely to be sort of thrown off. So with that said, I just read this part. Oh, this is about as pretentious, sexist, and downright pointless a movie you could ever see in the sci-fi genre. Now, this is going to show you the height of my unprofessionalism. Uh, whenever I have to say something that I know I don't sort of want this echo around, I, again, I don't use a microphone. This is really lame. I just get really close to the camera, and the microphone is about right here, so I just sort of put my lips relatively close to the camera. So, let's see here. I actually have two lines, because I don't know which one I want to do. One is, well, there goes two of my lies, and the other is just cat scream. That just means I'm going to make some sort of cat noise. So, here's a few of those. <clears throat> well, there goes two of my lives. Well, there goes two of my lives. Well, there goes two of my lives. Now, here's the one of the cat scream. Wow! 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 So, that's how I do that. I'm a nostalgia critic, and if you'll excuse me, I'm going to find a woman to wash my socks. Oh! So there, that's the main part of filming. Uh, but now, as I pointed out before, I have these red sections, so I have to go film those. For example, this is the scene where I'm going to conduct the coffee maker. And literally, just standing here, I got an idea, uh, because the shot reminded me very much of Child's Play, that maybe I should incorporate the Casper joke again. So I'm going to do one shot where I'm just conducting, and then one shot where I'm conducting, I get attacked by the ghost.
Now, something else I'm going to do here is I'm going to do what they call cheat to the camera, where if I'm conducting, I'm conducting like this, but you can't see that much. So I'm going to sort of cheat my way this way, which is not how a person would normally stand. But when you're watching it on video or on film, it looks a little bit more natural because you can see more of the person. Okay, now you're gonna see the section where I film in front of the green screen. This is where I'm gonna do the stand-up comedian. Now, something uh, that you might be noticing, two things you might be noticing, one is that, hey, that's not green. Well, the way I get around that is that I usually crop it later, but the catch is that I can't go beyond the green screen. So whenever I use my hand actions, I have to be very, you know, strapped to here. Um, and the other thing to keep in mind with that too is that if I need to be shrunken down on the green screen or something like that, I don't wanna go outside the perimeters of the screen of what I have. And I do have another green screen, but if I'm in a hurry, I just do one. Uh, the other thing to keep in mind when you're seeing this, what you're probably thinking of is shadows. You don't want shadows on a green screen. Uh, for the most part, that's true. You want to keep shadows uh, as out of it as you can, but there's something even worse than shadows, and that's if the light is too bright on the green screen. If you have a light, uh, too bright, let me see. I'll pull this one a little closer. You see how the screen starts to go a little white when you bring the, uh, the light a lot closer? The reason that is bad is because if you're wearing a white shirt or you have white skin or whatever, I mean, that's going to play with it as well, and that's going to sort of take away the color in your skin when you try to key it. And for whatever reason, uh, on Adobe Premiere anyway, the uh, keying effects, if you use the ultra key, actually gets rid of these shadows relatively well. Uh, it's not perfect, but it actually does sort of take them away. So the shadows, in this case, at least with Adobe Premiere, are not as big a problem. It's not they're not, you know, if they're like that dark, if they're that black, that's bad. But I mean, for what you're seeing now, surprisingly, isn't that bad. So, uh, yeah, now I'm going to do my bit. Hey, what do you call a man who just lost all logic? A woman! Hey, what do you call a man who just lost all logic? A woman! Okay, so now I have the footage imported into the computer. And I use uh, Adobe Premiere CS5, actually technically this is 5.5, uh, and this is what I use to edit. And what I go through on this day is that I go through the timeline, everything that I shot, and I pick out the shots that I like the most. And sometimes if I'm not sure, maybe one shot is sort of similar to another, or maybe I want a variation or something, I'll hold on to the shots. But I don't put the video, uh, not the video, I don't put the film footage in yet uh, from the movie. I put in, this is just going through, just getting a skeleton of what I shot, just getting everything in order so that when I do have the film footage, I just go in there and I put it together. Now I'm going to play with the uh, brightness and the contrast. You can see I can make it a lot brighter, I can make it a lot darker. And usually what I do, the brightness usually is not an issue, it's usually the contrast. Even though this looks pretty good, you can always make it a little better. So I'm going to turn the contrast up just a touch. And now the thing with it, you can go really high or you can go really low to where it looks great. I'm going to go to about, uh, let's see, that looks pretty good. That's about 18. And, uh, yeah, I have that for the rest of the footage. So usually do that at the beginning because you don't want to have to go in and do it for every single shot. Oh, yeah, you should be moaning because today we got Doomsday Machine. Now, something I forgot to notice you'll see is that I left about one second of silence just looking at the camera. I don't look away. I don't look down. And the reason for this, I found out, is that even reviews need pacing. Uh, and that doesn't mean that you're necessarily leaving just a long place for people to laugh because you know they're going to laugh very long because you can't hold on a shot for too long. But I found in the beginning, a lot of times I would cut it too fast and it wouldn't allow time for what you're saying to sink in or process or something like that. And just like a movie or... A, or a, a bit of writing or anything, reviews do need pacing. So you can't just have everything too fast. You can have it fast, but you still need it to sink in for people, unless the joke is that it's going so fast you can barely process it. But for a review for like what I'm doing, uh, you need to have a good pace. And now for these scenes, I know I'm going to be reading this. So what I do is that I separate the audio from the video and I pretty much get rid of the video in these scenes until I see a moment where I know I'm going to start talking again. Like I can see I'm looking at the camera now and throwing my hand up. Uh, so I know I'm going to start talking at this point. So here I put the video right back together so that this way 
as you can see now, I just have the audio I can play with, and that's going to be much easier to edit than having to black out the video the whole time. So it's easier just to cut the video out. And the way you know if your sound is too loud or not is right here. And I used to ignore this, but I was wrong because I had my speakers. It was way too low, so I turned the sound up way too high, and it was always distorted. And uh, I've learned recently that I have to just keep track of this. You just try to keep it as little as you can in the red. So here you'll see it doesn't really go in there as much. Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic guy. Remember it so you don't have to. Nope. But, again, if you do something really crazy, like let's say I was listening to this and I said, oh, that's way too soft, or I had my speakers turned out too low, I really want to be able to hear it, you'll get this. Guy, remember it so you don't have to. And welcome to another special edition. Now, you see how much it was going in the red there, and also the reason you don't want this because the sound gets really distorted, so you definitely don't want it to go in the red. If it does once or twice for a joke, maybe, but really, for the most part, you want to keep away from that. Okay, so I just got done editing the uh, skeleton of the whole thing. As you can see, you have a lot of areas where there's just sound, and then a lot of areas where there's video. So if you sort of go through here, oh, it's a, come on, read that, yeah, oh, blank, 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 yeah, video, blank, 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 video. So that's sort of what I have here. And then the next thing to do, which I'll start uh, tomorrow, because I usually do other videos, is that... I will then put in the movie and start in certain areas where, you know, that needs to go. And then I'll do things like uh, do the green screen effect and stuff, which I will show you next. Okay, and this is the last day that I do my editing. And this is where I put the movie clips in. I mess with green screen footage. I put in sound effects. I do all the little technicals that, uh, you know, pretty much finalize everything. What I usually do, I give myself, because you know it says five days altogether. So I give myself maybe one or two extra days in case something goes wrong or in case something goes longer, uh, which happens a lot. But uh, usually, um, you know, I can get it done in a good amount of time. But, you know, you have those extra days just in case. Okay, now I'm going to show you a little bit about how I do the green screen effect. Now, remember what I was saying before about how these shadows actually aren't going to be that big a problem? Well, using the ultra key, you'd pick the darkest part of the shadow, which would be about here. As you see, well, you still got some gray in there, you know, for the uh, background color. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to play around with the settings a touch. As you see, that looks a little better, but it's a little hard to make out because when you don't have anything in the background, it just goes totally black. So I'm just going to take one of the pictures, just for now, this is just a temporary uh, thing until I get a better background. So here we go, that's an even, I'm going to play around with it a little bit underneath even bigger, there you go. Alright, so now you can see whether or not shadows are coming through. Of course you can see them over here, but as for the rest of it, it's not too bad. I'm going to maximize... You can see I'm getting a little bit of graininess there. You see how it goes a little fuzzy there? We're going to try and fix that up a bit. All right, so I have the edges uh, looking pretty good, at about the best I'm going to get here. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is that I'm going to... Oh, what the hell is that? You got these uh, this wall background. Well, that's a very easy fix. All I do, I take the crop tool, and I simply put that in there, and then I simply... Uh, crop it from the left, and I clop it, uh, crop it from the right. So that way now it looks like there's a full background, but obviously I don't want to use uh, this little special shop here, so I'm going to put in this blue background. Now, backgrounds you can find, you know, for green screen effects or whatever, uh, there's a lot of various places you can find them. Uh, uh, shutter stock is pretty good. Uh, deposit photo is also uh, pretty good. I, I think shutter stock I like to use the most. Um, you usually have to pay it for them, but, uh, you know, if you use them over and over, it's pretty much worth it. So, now you have this image here, and when you see me talk... Uh, was dropped in the city, Mr. Howard. Uh, but you see there's a problem there. The crop... I'm starting to go a little out there, so I have to go in, I have to adjust the crop a little bit from the left side. There we go, so now it's not quite as bad. City. Mr. Howard, your toast just came out of the oven. Repeat. Your toes just came out of the oven. Next, I'm going to play with the brightness and contrast just a little bit. I'm going to make this a little brighter, maybe a little bit more colorful. And I do that because this background is just so uh, bright and it does stand out. And the contrast is so big uh, that if you make yourself a little colorful, uh, it'll match a little bit more. So let's see how this looks. No fast draw. Two minutes ago, a nuclear bomb was dropped in the city. Mr. Howard, your toes just came out of the oven. Repeat. Your toes just came out of the oven. And seeing how I only scheduled 10 seconds for this meeting, that's all I have to tell you. Remember what I said, especially the part about breathing. 
And that's how you do the green screen effect. Okay, so it's uh, near the end of the day now. As you can see, it is night, and I am done editing this review. And as you can see, uh, it sort of looks a lot more cluttered, a little bit like a mess, but all the uh, all the movie clips have now been put in there. What's that extra stuff right there? I mean, this is the project from beginning to end, and now what's this stuff? These are all the other uh, extra shots, the extra takes that I didn't use, like the ones that I just, I didn't like the way, hey, it's a nice face there, isn't it? Um, you know, the ones I didn't like the way they sound, or I thought another one sounded better, but I hold on to them because if it turns out... Uh, something in this project didn't flow or didn't work very well, sometimes a different take is the answer. And even though at the moment, you know, I like one of these other takes, if it turns out while watching it through that maybe it doesn't flow or maybe I should have been more angry at one point, or maybe I should have been more happy or something like that, the other takes are still right there and I can reference them very easily instead of having to scroll through and uh, uh, see where they are. So... Uh, basically, folks, that is how you make a Nostalgia Critic. I next just export it as an MP4. I upload it to the website. And that's really about it. It's not too complicated, but it is a lot of work. Like, today, uh, it always takes the longest. It can be anything from 8 to, like, 12 hours, pretty much, uh, just depending on how long the review is. So it's, uh, as I always say, though, I love it so much, so it's not hard work, but it's long work. Uh, and it is good work, and I, I really do adore it. So, guys, thanks so much for watching. Uh, maybe you can get some good tidbits out of this, and uh, thanks again for buying the DVD. Take care.